Hello everyone, the Ontario Gardener here. Welcome to April, I don't know, 23rd or something like that. It is nice and sunny out today, as you can see. So today is a good day to go down and bring up and clean out the beehives that didn't make it. I have two hives that didn't make it over the winter. A lot of people in this area lost their bees. I know one guy from different online forums that lost, supposedly, 63 of 65 hives, which if I lose 63 or 65, I probably would quit. <laughs> I lost two of two, so it's still a bigger percentage, but point being is only two. So I wanna clean the boxes out, do an inspection, see if there's any mite damage, if there's any mold, if there's bad stuff, we're gonna get rid of it, and then clean all the bees out, and then I'll just store the boxes up in here. My new bees, my two new nukes are coming probably in about three to four weeks towards the end of mid to end of May. And uh, yeah, when that time comes, obviously I'm gonna be bringing you guys along, showing you how I uh, take nukes and put them into hives, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, anyway, so let's just get started. We're gonna pop down to the hive or to the bee yard. I got my bike, I got the bike and I got my trailer over here. Trailer over here, ATV. So we'll pop down. They're just, they're just literally right down the hill here. We're gonna go get them. And then I'll show you what they look like now. And then we'll bring them back and do a hive inspection. And I'll show you what that's all about. All right, so we're down here at the bee yard. I got my two hives. Uh, they look like this over the winter. I just took this top cover off. So you insulate them, it's just this like corrugated plastic. Next year I might invest in some better wraps. But when I checked these a few weeks ago, this is what I found. Dead bees everywhere. So I'm not sure why these guys were all up at the top. I don't know. It's unfortunate. These are all, all dead bees. And these are like this from the winter. Now there was a little bit of mold up here. Now this could be because, well, this is damp because these have died and they're just decaying here. Um, you might see some little activity of flies or something flying around here, but they're not bees. Uh, there are no new colonies moved into here. Now I could maybe try to set one of these up as a swarm trap, but it can't do it here. I'd have to take it like, uh, ignore this mess. But way out there at the edge of my this part of my property, like where the, the fence line is, I can maybe try to set a swarm trap up there. But for now, this is what we got. And I don't have any tools. I should have brought my hive tools down here. But I want to get both of these loaded up on my little trailer here. And then we'll go up to the house, take these apart, and show you what we got. So as I'm taking the hives apart, this is what I find. Now this mold isn't new, or sorry, isn't... Uh, is new because the bees are decaying but they're all here all dead why don't know but there's a few thousand bees right there this hive i'm sure will be the same Alrighty, hope you guys can see me okay uh back to the shop now Alrighty, so we're back to the shop now. Hopefully you guys can see me okay. Um, and yeah, so I got three I got four boxes. This box here, and I got three more. So two of the boxes, which were one on each high, the bottom ones hardly had anything in it. There wasn't a lot of honey in there. Those were just kind of there. Uh, the top boxes are super heavy, which I'll show you that in a second. But I just wanted to show you here, this is what the bottom board looks like. So this goes on the bottom, and then you have your hive sitting on top of this. And this is mold in here. Now, the reason why there's mold in here is because all the bees were decayed here. So this isn't that hard. I'll scrape all the bees, all the dead bees off of here. I'm outside, I'm in my shop, so I can just sweep all this stuff out into the yard then. And what I'll come do, what I'll do then is I'll come through here, uh, maybe with like a wire brush or some sort of abrasive thing. A brush like this isn't gonna do anything. This is a soft brush, this is a bee brush like a harder brush just to get all the mold off give these things a nice rinse um not using chemicals on it but use a nice rinse to get all this mold off and then stack these things in my shop and let them dry um because these are wet now like they're saturated isn't the word but you can tell the different colorations because when it was warming up there is honey in these boxes that are dripping onto this which isn't good so we got to clean all these up it's gonna be something simple like this and then i'll get some uh, steel wool or something or i might have another coarser brush here at the barn and I'll clean all these up and then for the tops we have a couple things we have this is what would be called your top your inner cover 
this is the top of it, so there's not too much. I mean, there's dead bees here, and then there's mold where the bees are dead. So again, I'll just go through, scrape these out, and they may look like they might be alive because they might be wiggling, but they're dead. Trust me, they're not alive at all. And wherever there's mold, it's because of the dead bees, not because of moisture otherwise. But again, this is the top of it, not a big deal. I'll go through this again, clean it up real good, and then stick it in my shop over here where the ventilation is decent, where it's dry, it's out of the wind. I don't want to stick these out in the sun because I don't want them to get too hot, if that makes sense. I just want them to kind of dry out naturally. On the back side of this plate, the top the radar cover, is as you have this kind of, they build in comb. They did this before the winter last year. So it's gonna come through, scrape all this out. And again, all the propolis along here, I wanna, I wanna get this as, maybe not this doesn't have to be removed unless it's, unless it's moldy, which it's not, which is, this is all propolis, um, which is what the bees use like sap from spruce trees and from pine trees and different trees that have like a sap to them, heck, even pine maple trees in a sense. And they use it to plug up all the gaps. Now the way this is built is there's no gap between this and this, it's, it's wedged inside of this, like a, I don't know, a dovetail or something. Um, but the bees don't know that, so they want to block out every little bit that they can. So I'm not going to remove all of that, because when I get my new bees, they just have to rebuild that. Because the first thing the bees are going to do when they get put into this hive is they're going to inspect the hive. They're going to seal up any gaps, even little gaps like this that to me and you don't seem like a gap. They're going to fill those in, and then they're going to go through the frames that I've left them, and they're going to clean them out. Because I'm going to show you in a second here, we have brood frames in here. I uh, hope I can find one that actually has brood in it from like the fall that never hatched out or that just died over the winter. Because the bees will go in as long as there's not, they're not moldy. The bees will go in there and they'll clean all that out. And which is good, what, what's good about that, actually this is while I'm talking here, let's get one out. The good thing about this season, despite losing a lot, basically losing, let me get this out of here, despite losing everything, is that the bees don't have to make this comb. You see this comb? I don't have a frame that doesn't have anything on it. Um, let's see if I can show you one. Here. So when I put the frames in last year, it's just this plastic foundation that has, that's dipped in wax, has a bit of wax on it so the bees can build off of this. And they have to make all that wax. That's like when you're feeding them sugar water, sugar syrup, whatever you want to call it in the springtime, and the nectar that they're finding, they're turn, turning that into sugars, to build out this comb to make this look like this. And if you kind of see a profile, see how um, we can see the, the difference in size here. Look at this, it's completely flat. Up here, there's a little bit missing. So the good thing here is like, there's honey in here. Now, I wouldn't necessarily eat this honey because it's been sitting all winter. Now, theoretically, it shouldn't go bad, but this is uncapped honey. This is capped, so I should be able to dig in there and eat that if I want to, but I'm not going to. And there is, here's a couple, let me show you real quick. Hopefully you guys can see this up close. Right here, there's three, there's bees in here. See right there, they are. I can pull it out. Uh, there. So that's a bee that was trying to hatch out, but died. I think that's the only little grouping. There's one down here. You can see a bee butt sticking out. But the point I'm getting at is all this comb that they've made, all this brown stuff, they don't have to make that this year. And then here's the honey I was speaking of just down here. I might want to ruin it too much, but this is honey that I won't eat because it's been sitting all winter. This has been capped. This is good honey. And even up in here, if I wanted to have a little snack, and as you can see up here, this is the frame without them building off of it. And look how much they've, how I can do it. Look how much they've built off of that, right? So the good thing about what I'm trying to get at here is the bees are going to have less work in the spring. When the nukes come, uh, there's going to be, I think, four frame nukes. There'll be one with pollen in it, there'll be one with honey, and there'll be two with brood. That's usually how they send nukes. So what I'll do is I'll go through, I'm gonna run single deeps this year to start, not doubles, to start I'm gonna run singles for a few weeks and then see the progress. But because they don't have to make all of this, they don't have to make this, or very little bit this year, it should give them a really big you know, one-two punch to really hit it hard at the spring because I want to try to split these at some point, at least split one before the winter. I don't know if it's going to be possible, but anyway. So, while we're still here, so you see, I was said about cleaning these up. Now, there's nothing to do here. There's nothing to do here, but on the edges, you see here, there's a little bit that can come out. I got to be careful because this is sticking out past this a bit. I don't want to mess it up. Down here, there's some propolis. I want to get that out of here because if I don't, they're going to keep building 
like building the frame. Like the, like the bees want to con confine everything. They want to make everything tight together. And some of these may need a little bit of work for them. Pops like that. <coughs> there is a honeybee right here. There's a honeybee right here. As we're talking, this guy or lady probably, who knows where she came from? But there, that means there are bees here. <laughs> so all the honey that's in these boxes, the bees are going to be attracted to this, which is not a bad thing. But look at them. That's eating the honey. That's just dripping. There's a little drip right here. Huh? What do you think about that? That's the thing about working with bee empty or dead bee boxes. <clears throat> Bees will find the honey. And at daylight today, I see more flying around right here already. A whole bunch. So I got to get this going. I think what I'm going to do is, uh, see, I'm going to put you over here. I don't want to mess, let, let her do her thing. Let's see. Let's just pull one more out of here that has a little bit more stuff that needs to be removed. And you don't got to handle these too gingerly because there's no bees in them, right? Here's another one. My hands are getting already all sticky. Look at this. These are bees here that haven't hatched or started to hatch. The, the, the bees that I'm getting will come in here, they'll clean all this out, they'll clean out anything that's left in here. And as you see, we have, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, like uh, wax here that they, they built comb out. I wanna clean all of this up. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's very simple to do, it just takes time. And even here, I wanna knock some of this back a little bit. Because the bees will come in and you say, well, you're ruining that. No, I'm not. The bees will come back and they'll fix this to the same level as this. And like, just get this propolis off because I want to, and again, you don't have to do this, but I'm doing it because I want the bees to have as little work as possible going into the spring. Here's another one. Perfect cells. The queen never laid here. She might have died off early. Here's some hatch, trying to hatch bees. Ones that just never made it, you know, unfortunately. But this is real dark. Also, this is a black frame. So the, the frame inside here is not yellow, it's black. But this is real dark, real dark comb that they've made. Who knows from where, but they've made it from somewhere around here. They'll go through here, they'll clean all this out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through all these boxes. I already got piles of dead bees down in here. There's piles of them, it's dead bees, right? I wanna go through all these, clean them all out, and I think when I'm all finished, I'll bring you back to, to show you what one of my hives looks like. Um, and then we can get ready for the spring, ready for my nukes to come in probably about four weeks. Like I said, today's I think the 23rd or 24th of April. So I'm hoping within a month from now, I got more videos, bee videos, and I got my nukes. Alrighty, so we're back. Um, it took me, I don't know what time it is now, quite a while uh, during the last cut and this cut, but I'll show you what we got. We got everything here. That I brought it from the other location. Went through all these boxes and flies. This one's empty, but you know, I kind of scraped all the all the junk and stuff off of here. Not everything. The bees will clean that up if they need to. Then you got some frames in here. This is full of frames. This is full of frames. And I have the other frames that will go in these two boxes here, just stacked here. Some of them are a bit wet, if you will. I want to let them kind of dry out a bit. And I got the bottom board, screen boards, whatever. The rest of my bee on the other side of my shop. I have a couple frames. Oh, I actually had them. Sorry. There's two frames I had here that were completely filled and capped with honey, or 95% capped with honey. So I'm going to take them into the house and, oops, and extract them. Let's just look at one of these nice, if I can get it out. Yikes. Like, that's a nice frame of honey. I mean, I kind of put a, sorry, I kind of put a hole in it there. But uh, you can tell this was done in two different stages. See the left-hand side along the edges? That was done first. Stuff in the middle was done second, late in the season last year. You can see how light it is there versus how dark it gets in the middle. And that's depending on what they're eating. This side's a bit the same. You see how this part here was done first? And this was done second, much darker compared to here. It was a lot lighter honey. So it all depends on what nectar and stuff that they're finding. A lot of golden rod in the fall. Uh, which is why it's darker. In the spring, you got a lot of dandelions and various other flowers. But in the fall, you got like the golden rod, the weed that comes up and it looks like a, a rod of gold. I don't know, like a frawny type of thing. But yeah, that's that. So I want to thank you guys for joining me. 
when we get the new bees in in a few weeks as i said earlier in the video i'm going to bring you guys along i'll suit up got my bee suits and all my equipment ready to go got my tripod and we'll go down to the bee yard i may be moving on bees this year in this different location from where i had them last year um to get them more sun but we'll see we'll see what happens i'm going to talk to the bee guys uh, that are kind of a few miles away from me where, I, where I'm getting my nukes anyway. To see what their suggestions are because it's always very windy in my location. So keeping them out of the wind is good, but also giving them sunlight, sunshine is good as well. So got to find that happy balance. But anyway, thank you guys for joining me. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification button, especially if you want to uh, watch more bee videos. You can also follow me on Twitch at the Ontario Gardener. Same name is out on here. There'll be a link in the description below where I do lots of uh, games. And I also will be trying to stream some gardening stuff this year. If my internet and my Wi-Fi works, we'll be doing that. If not, we'll see videos on that. Uh, coming down the line, we got potato planting videos. We got tomato and pepper transplant videos. We got hop transplant or hop um, cleanup videos, asparagus, rhubarb cleanup, greenhouse cleanup, a whole bunch of things. I may do an overview video uh in a couple weeks when it, when the weather sticks because it's like 20 degrees today come tuesday it's supposed to be like plus four <laughs> celsius so back to crap and then tomorrow monday well monday today sunday is going to rain all day this video will probably come out uh i think it'll either be monday or tuesday that this will be released but in any case uh thank you guys for joining me and i'll catch you next time